so welcome to this inspiration hour coming to you from Oracle TV. My name is Joyce W. Charles. We are here to inspire you, to just encourage you to speak the word of God into your life and your life can never be the same again. Like my father would say, even the color of your skin will change. Now today, I am doing a teaching concerning your life because uh, the will of God in our lives is that we progress. The will of God in our lives is that we move from one stage to the other. It is the will of God for you and me to live a progressive life. It is the will of God for me and you to move forward in life. And so today, we are going to begin reading the book of Proverbs, chapter number 4, from verses number 18. That is the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter number 4, from verses number 18. It says, But the path of the just is the shining light, is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Let me read that again. But the path of the just, or the path of the righteous, is as shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. I want to rephrase that. What basically Proverbs 4.18 is saying, that the path of the righteous is like the shining light that breaks into a perfect day. In other words, your path can be like the morning that gets a little bit of light around 5.30, around 6 o'clock, then you see a bit of light. But then as the day breaks forth, you get light until it is a perfect day. That is what the Bible means in Proverbs 4 and verses number 18. That our life is like, the, our path in life is like the day that shines brighter and brighter until it is a perfect day. In other words, it is the will of God for you to progress in life. And I want to speak to you today because you're going to progress from where you are. You are not going to be the kind that mark times in one level of life year after year. That power from today, I call it broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever tied you in one level, that you cannot move from where you are to where God wants you to go, I break those powers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever dictates your forward movement, and you cannot go beyond where you are financially. You cannot go beyond where you are as a family. You cannot go beyond renting a house. You cannot go beyond handling big money. That power of darkness, by the entrance of the word of God is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants us to walk in a path that progresses. It's the will of God for you to move from one grace to the other. It is the, the, the will of God for you to experience promotion each and every single day. And so I want to share with you some principles, some seven principles on how to progress in life. Because sometimes as much as there is a lot of spiritual expectation and spiritual activities, there are things that we need to see that we are doing and we are involved in and we are getting engaged too, so that we are able to move forward. Number one, one principle for us to be able to move forward and to progress, it is the principle of diligence, diligence. Our God is a God who is faithful, but how you are diligent in whatever you do, hard work, that is what I mean by diligence, it will give you a reward. So as much as God expects you to move forward because he has blessed you that much, there are things you as a person need to do, and number one is diligence. And we can see that in the book of Proverbs 12 from verses number 27. It just says, the lazy do not roast any game. But the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. Let me rephrase that. That the lazy will not roast any game. In other words, there will be no barbecue for a lazy person. Because they didn't go to the game to hunt to get something to barbecue. There is no nyamachoma for a lazy person. Because you cannot nyamachoma, you cannot have nyamachoma if you're not going to get that animal and choma it. In other words, when you are lazy, there is no food on the table. And the verses continue to say, but the diligent will feed on the riches of the hunt. So if you're diligent, whatever you go hunting, whatever you go pursuing, you get. So if you're not diligent in life, you are not going to get the profit of the hunt of whatever you're pursuing. Hard work is important. And let me just be very clear on this. 
That is a very big difference between hard work and slavery. These are two different things. There is a big difference between working hard and being a slave. When you work hard, you wake up the time you're supposed to wake up. You put in the effort that God has given you to put in whatever you do. You do things in according to this word. When you look at the life of Jesus Christ, he was in the ministry. By 3 a.m. he was already praying. He spent his day preaching the gospel, going around. He was diligent. And so when you see him getting the results of ministry that he got, it is because he was diligent. A person who is diligent, they use their time well. They understand the value of time. They understand they don't have forever. They understand what you put in is what you get out. They understand if I waste today, I'll never recover it. Time is never recoverable. You can recover other things, but time you don't recover. Once one hour is gone, you'll never be able to get it again. But slavery is the aspect whereby you got no rest. You have to, you, you sweat blood for you to be able to eat. It is so difficult for you to, to do, you know, to enjoy life. You're a slave to work. You're a slave to, to, to that company. You're a slave to that person. You're a slave to money. That is slavery. But diligent is when you understand where God has placed you. Need your total attention. So for you to progress in life, you need to be diligent. You need to work hard. What has God given you today? You need to do it diligently. Are you called in the ministry? Don't sleep until 6 a.m. in the morning. And you're trying to wake up to try and uproot what the devil already planted. Wake up early. Wage war at midnight. Pray every single day. Whether you need to, to, to fast or you need to give, be diligent in your Christian work as a minister. If you're employed in a company, do what needs to be done. Whatever has been stipulated for you to do in that company, do it diligently. If there is any qualification or quality analyzation that happens in that company, may you be found the one person who does things well, that is diligence. And when God sees that diligence, definitely you are going to reap from that. That is why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the lazy do not roast any game. Because they have got no game to roast. Game is basically wild animals that are edible. That is why the Bible is referring to it as game. But the diligent feed on the riches of the hand. So when you're diligent, you will always feed. When you're diligent, you will always have something on the table. When you're diligent, people will like to associate with you. When you're diligent, people will like you to be in their company. When you're diligent, you, you, pastors would want you to be at the front line of their ministry. When you are diligent, the nation will favor you. The soil of the land will favor you. Everything will favor you because you understand the law of diligence. And number two, principle of moving forward and progressing in life. It is discipline. Discipline is very important. Discipline is very important. If you're going to progress in life, you have to be disciplined. You have to understand that you cannot live carelessly and things are just going to work in your favor. If you're not disciplined, there are things that will not work for you. There are things in life that can only be acquired because of the discipline that you possess. There are things in life that cannot be attained, but can only be attained because of the discipline that you walk in. And we can see that in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12 and verses number 11. That is Hebrews 12, 11 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest. Remember that. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. When you've been trained through discipline, when you're disciplined in how you do your things, you're going to progress in life. Going forward financially, you have to be disciplined in your finances. Are you a giver? Are you a tither? Do you seed? Do you give sacrifices? That is discipline. You need to get to a level financially. When it comes to things like tithing, it is no longer a question. You don't even debate in your mind. It is not even part of the list you would consider. It is a done deal. Tithing, you don't question. You don't waste time. It is just goes where it needs to go. You pay it before God. That is discipline. 
Discipline is what causes somebody to decide. You know, this is what I've been stipulated to do in the company. I'm supposed to be at work by eight. And because I am disciplined to the rules and the regulations of my contract, I'm going to be at work by eight or 7.50. So that you have 10 minutes to settle and you start your work. That is discipline. Discipline is when you look at your family and, and you know there are so many bills that are waiting for you in this family. And you decide, I'm going to be so disciplined. I will not divert the finances of my family. I am going to feed my family. I'm going to clothe my family. I know there are other things that are waiting. My relatives are waiting. So and so is waiting. This and this is looking up to me. But you discipline with your finances and providing to your family. You don't get your salary, you go sit in a bar, take one crate of beer, and your children don't have school fees. Your children don't have anything on the table. That is lack of discipline. You're not disciplined enough as a provider. But when you're disciplined as a provider, you are going to do whatever needs to be done for you to put food on the table and to provide for your family whatever is required for you to provide. When you are working in discipline, you let it train you. You do things the way they are supposed to be done. Even wherever you work has got a stipulated, you know, rules and regulations. You stay within the guidelines of those rules and regulations. Discipline. Discipline, you know it when somebody is driving and the, 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 the signs on the road say it is 80 kilometers an hour. You don't break that. You drive in that speed. Discipline. Discipline will guide you. Discipline will give you a harvest. And that is what the Bible is telling us. That not discipline seems pleasant at the time. In other words, whenever you are working in discipline, you may not like it. Because you see now, if, you, if, if you're supposed to drive 80 kilometers per hour, but now you're going 100, so what? But when you're disciplined, you, you don't care whether there is a camera. You just know that is what the sign of the road says and you're going to drive by that. So you may not like it. Your body may just feel, I'm in a hurry. I need to just, you know, accelerate a bit. But because you're disciplined, you stay within the guidelines of discipline. So you may not like it when you are going through discipline. It is painful, but later on, the Bible says it produces a harvest. There is always a harvest when people are disciplined. I don't know how many of you, if you've been ever uh, been blessed to go to school, if you look at most of the children who are so disciplined in school, like who, when they're in class, they were supposed to do homework, and they did homework. When they're in class, they're supposed to be quiet, and they're quiet, they work, they listen to the teacher. If you look at their graph of life, you are going to notice those kind of kids, they go very fine in life because they don't break laws. Whether it is a law that has been put in class, it is a law that has been put in the estate, it is a law that has been put by the family. These are children, if the father says you need to be in the house by six, they are there by five thirty. Those kind of children, they go very fine life. But the one who cannot wait to break a law, they are not disciplined, they cannot listen. Those kind of people struggle. And so you will struggle to progress in life when you are not a person who keeps discipline and one of the areas that we are going to have to improve is the area of discipline walk in discipline the discipline of this one when you walk in the discipline of the word of god even when you feel you have a window to do something wrong when you feel you have a window to do whatever you feel you want to do but you keep the discipline and the guidelines of this word you are going to reap a harvest number three is wisdom Wisdom. If you're going to progress in life, you have to walk in wisdom. You cannot afford to walk in foolishness. You have to walk in wisdom. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you're going to experience God, if you're going to, to, to experience God in a very natural manner, walk in wisdom. Sometimes we spiritualize things so much. That is why we don't progress. Because everything is hallelujah, hosanna. We are going to heaven. That's right. But here on earth, there are laws that we have to adhere to for us to progress in life. And this, one of the laws I'm talking about is wisdom. Again, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 11, verses number 8, For wisdom is better than rubies. In other words, wisdom is better than a precious stone. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. 
Wisdom is what causes you to make the right decisions. Wisdom is what causes you to see this path and say, no, I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. Godly wisdom, it is what causes you to rise above when everybody else is going down because you are operating in a different dimension of analyzing things. When you're walking in wisdom, you are able to look at something that people find so usual and so normal. But you're like a partner. If I do this thing this way, I am going to end like this. So wisdom dictates I do A, B, C, D. When you're walking in wisdom, you realize I cannot miss a Bible study because I miss. It means I'm going to walk in the deficit of the word of God. And the manifestation of that word cannot happen because I don't have the word. Wisdom. Wisdom will tell you, I cannot date this person because this person is not the kind of person that I'm expected to be dating according to the word of God. Wisdom will guide you. It is more precious than rubies. You can have wisdom and you're going to go very, very far. When you have wisdom, you're going to be pushed forward. When you have wisdom, there are things you wouldn't do, there are things you will do. When you have wisdom, you will know when to wait, you will know when to act. When you have wisdom, you know when to speak, you know when to shut up. Have you ever seen people who don't have wisdom or speech? They can talk anything to anybody. They can break relationships. They can break families. They can break churches. Have you ever seen people who are just careless talkers because they don't have wisdom? Wisdom can break a family. Lack of wisdom can break a family. Lack of wisdom can break any kind of organization because we need wisdom to progress. Number four is knowledge. Number four for us to be able to progress, we need knowledge. And knowledge, it is important. Knowledge is very, very important in our lives. Because knowledge is a know-how. Knowledge, know-how. You know, right? Let us read the book of Proverbs 18.15. Proverbs 18.15 says, The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. In other words, when you have knowledge, you have the know-how. For example, if you don't have the knowledge of this word, you will not be able to expound it the way it should be. You have knowledge. That is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is having the know-how. If you don't have the knowledge on how to treat so and so, you may not be able to get favor before them because you don't have the knowledge. You don't have the know-how of dealing with that person. When you don't have the knowledge in a specific field, if you don't have the knowledge in engineering, you may never be an engineer because you need knowledge to be an engineer. That is knowledge. So if you're going to progress in life, you need the knowledge. You need the know-how. Whatever you need to acquire, acquire it. Get seasoned. The life you are living, no doors are going to open for you if you're not seasoned. You need to be seasoned in life. You need to acquire knowledge. Knowledge is acquired. You don't just wake up one morning and you have all the knowledge. You acquire it. You go to class. You look for it. You pay money to get the knowledge. You pay somebody to get the knowledge. You spend your time with somebody who has the knowledge so that you may acquire the knowledge from them. You find yourself in the right places where you can acquire this knowledge. So knowledge is very, very important. You need to be able to fit in the system. If you don't have knowledge, you can never fit in the system. If you don't have knowledge, the doors will never open up for you because you need knowledge for that specific door to open for you. If you do not have knowledge, there are people who will never listen to you because according to them, whatever you say is not relevant. So when you have knowledge, you become relevant in the society. When you have knowledge, you become relevant in the field that you want to be able to venture into. So knowledge is very important and it is one of the keys that causes you to progress in life. You see, in the book of Daniel, when Daniel, uh, you know, Meshach and Abednego and Shadrach, when they got into Babylon, one of the reasons why they were chosen among the Israelites, because they were choice, they were, they were the choicest, they were the best, they were knowledgeable. You know, they, they, they had the best of knowledge and they were easy to learn. So whatever knowledge they needed to be able to operate in Babylon, they were easy to learn. So knowledge is a key. Knowledge is a key to everybody who wants to progress in life. And you cannot just say you are old or you're outdated. You, can, you have no time to learn ABCD. Use your time to learn. Whatever comes before you, you need to learn it, get to know it. 
Spend your time to learn it. Engage yourself with people who teach you. People who add value in your life, giving you knowledge. Connect with them because that is going to cause you to progress. That is the importance of knowledge. When you have knowledge, you become a cutting edge. Like you are the real deal people are looking for. When you have knowledge, you become what people want. When you have knowledge, people stop looking for qualification. They have find you. When you have knowledge, people stop searching for that person. You become the person. When you have knowledge, people stop seeking for the expertise because you are the expertise. When you have knowledge, people start listening to you because you have the know-how of whatever is needed. When you have knowledge, you improve your life. When you have knowledge, you're able to fit in the system. When you have knowledge, you become powerful because when you have knowledge, it is power. So there are realms of power you may not be able to venture into until you're working in knowledge. We go to the next one, that is prayer. If you're going to progress in life, you cannot rule out prayer. You cannot walk a life that is a life of prayerlessness. You have to pray. The Bible says in the book of Philippians 4 and verses number 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So for you to progress in life, we need to pray. And I'm not going to spend time on this. The reason is because we mostly know how to pray. But these other principles of progressing in life are not really adhered to. So I'm not going to spend time to prayer because most of us know how to pray. Although sometimes we pray amiss. So what am I saying? When you pray right, when you pray right, when you know how to pray and when to pray, when you know how to wage war, when you know how to pray the prayer of thanksgiving, when you know how to wage war, when you know how to pray and fast, when you know how to do supplication, when you understand the dynamics of prayer, you can never pray amiss. You pray right, you get answers the time you're supposed to be getting them. So sometimes you can be so prayerful. But there is no answers because you are praying, yes, but you are praying amiss. In other words, when it comes to prayer and you've been praying and you're not getting answers, find out, are you praying amiss? Are you praying and crying when you're supposed to be doing warfare? Because if the devil has come in your life and terrorizing you, you don't need tears, you scatter him. When the enemy has come in your finances, when the enemy has come in your career, in your business, you don't just pray, Lord, please remember me, help me. God helped you 2,000 years ago, and you have been given power. Luke 10, 19, you've been given power. You deal with the devil the way devils are supposed to be dealt with. You scatter that power, and you are in charge. You take dominion. So, when it comes to the law of prayer, the principle of prayer, pray right, you're going to see results. The next law is the law of a good association. You need to be well associated for you to move forward in life. If you're going to go where the Lord expects you to go, you need to be well connected. Get the right people who are going where you're going. You cannot be going north and you're connected with the people that are the south. You need to connect northwards because that is where you're going. If you're going to rise up in career, you get to have people who are going to pull you up. So do not allow pride to come your way and you cannot associate. Or do not allow, you know, foolishness and being uncooked. By being uncooked, I mean people who you cannot associate with because they don't fit in. Have you ever seen people who you cannot even connect them to anyone? Because the moment you tell them, meet so and so, meet this person, he's the manager of this company, this is the director, the next you know, they are calling them because they got the job card. They are calling them, they're asking them for money. They are seeing them for a job. They don't know how to connect. And the moment you do that, you miss it. But when you know how to get connected, you remain in this plane. God opens doors. You don't try to open them yourself. Because your gift will open doors for you. So, you need to get yourself good association. You need to pray them in. You need to call in divine helpers. You need to decree and to declare every person that you need for you to move forward where you need to go. They must appear in the name of Jesus Christ. That is called good association. There are people who will not go where they need to go without good associations. There are people you will need for you to end up where you are going. So you can never be a loner in life. You can never be somebody who says, I don't need anyone. You need people. 
That is pride. You need people. People will take you by the hand for you to go where you are going. You need people who are senior than you. You need people who are your peers. You need your juniors that you're going to pull up. And don't even forget those juniors can even open the doors for you. Remember the maid of Naaman. She said there is a prophet in my country. And by her, Naaman got his healing. So you need good association. Whether they are under you, they are your peers, or they are above you. You need them. And you need to know how to relate with people. Don't relate with people carelessly. God expects us to relate with people with love. So we need to be able to have good association. And then number six, sorry, number seven, the last one, is courage and determination. Courage and determination. Remember, moving forward in life means you're going through uh, a lot of trials and you're going against the force of darkness. I wouldn't like you to accomplish what you need to accomplish. So you need to be courageous. You need to be determined to go where you're going. And God said unto Joshua, God said unto Joshua, have, have not I commanded you, be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is, is, is with thee, without where you go. I'll read that again. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wheresoever you go. In other words, you need to be courageous. You need to be determined. That is the book of Joshua. Chapter number one from verses number eight, nine. You need to be determined. You need to be courageous. Going forward in life means you're going to find things that are going to discourage you. If you look at the story of Joshua, they were given the land. Like God has said, have given you all this land. Like I was with Moses, so shall I be with you, Joshua. But the truth is, there were Canaanites there. The truth is, that land that was given was occupied by the enemies of Israel. The truth is, they were not just enemies, they were armed. The truth is, they were not just people, they were giants. The truth is, these were people who were experienced in war and they had the right equipment. Remember, Israel is coming from the wilderness. Yanni, they, they have really been there for a long time in the wilderness. It is a hard life and you're meeting people who are established and you tell them, get out. They needed courage. They needed determination. It was not just another thing telling Joshua, be you strong and courageous and be determined. There was a reason why they could have given up. But God expects us to be determined and to be courageous. Life answers to courageous people. Life gives way to determined people. Paul says that once and again we wanted to come to Thessalonica, but Satan hindered us. In other words, there is a lot of hindrances on wherever road journey you're taking. Satan will hinder you. But be courageous and be determined. I want to pray together with you because it is my prayer that you're going to progress in life. From where you are going to where you, from where you are to where you're going, from today you have to progress. Whatever has caused you to be stuck, whatever has bound you there, has to break in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my viewers today. I decree and I declare the power to progress in their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray that from today, they are going to experience forward movement. They are going to walk in the principles that I've given them. And they are going to exercise them. And they are going to experience the breakthrough of God in all that they do. I pray that from today, powers of my timing are defeated. Powers of being in the same place year after year are defeated. I decree progression. I decree forward movement. I decree that where you are going is going to accept you. I open your doors for you. And I close each and every door of darkness to afflict you. No power of darkness will afflict you as you move forward. You are stronger than your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. My name is Joyce W. Charles. Thank you so much for watching. Write to us, call us, let us know what God is doing in your life. Share your testimony with us. Our pay bill is on the screen. You've been a blessing to you. Send us your sacrifice and God is going to bless you. Your life will turn around. Remember your life and the progress of your life and where you are going is tied in your sacrifice. Remember when the widow 
gave Elijah what she had. She had a tomorrow and a next day and a next day. Sometimes you might need to release what you have so that you're able to move forward in life. God bless you so much. I love you.